Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And the next day, as long as Mary's income is low enough, she can immediately qualify for Mass Health. Whatever number of hours Baypath says she needs to stay at home, Mass Health will pay for them. So there's a clear alternative for Mary. Now the real question therefore, that Frank and Mary would be wanting to ask themselves. Well, they'd want to ask a couple. First of all, remember that you, know, you saw their asset situation, right? So the question is, on their income, staying at home, assuming they get help from, from MassHealth, can they afford to have Mary stay at home? And they're going to need to figure that out. Because it may be that Baypath says, well, Baypath has the legal right to, to, to assign as many hours to Mary in home care as they want but they typically don't. Typically they won't assign more than 40 or 50 hours a week. Now that's a lot of care, but it means there's a lot of remaining hours. So it may be that Frank and Mary will want to use some of their other assets in order to supplement that care. But in their case they can do that. They've got quite a bit of extra cash. Remember they have the IRA and they have some savings. They have about $500,000 in extra cash, right? But the question is, is this going to work for them? Is a home care agency, strangers, strangers coming to their house a lot, going to work? And that's why I wanted you to hear from Shelby Marshall, and you're going to hear from her a little bit later on, about how home care works, what these agencies provide, because Shelby's agency is probably the agency that you would want to hire to do all of those extra hours that MassHealth isn't covering. So we're going to, we're going to hear from her a little bit more, but the bottom line is, that Frank and Mary could afford this, they could afford this on, with these kinds of assets for the reasons that we talked about, because you could simply shift everything to Frank and then Mary could immediately qualify for MassHealth. So she, you'd shift everything, but once again in that case, what Frank would want to do is change his will to make sure that if he died, the assets would still be safe whether Mary wanted to stay home or whether she wanted to go to a nursing home. So over time, in addition to this option developing to allow you to stay at home because of all the home care you can get, there's another option that's developed, assisted living um, communities. These are communities that 20 years ago, when my mother was going through this, were typically met for people who were just like slowing down a little bit, right? Like, you know, you had your house, but you're really tired of mowing the lawn, and you're a little worried about, you know, you don't want to shovel the snow, right? And maybe you really, really don't want to cook three meals a day, right? Or do some other stuff. Or you're just physically slowing down. You don't want to have to do that stuff. And so assisted living was really designed for folks who were still mentally fine uh, or maybe slipping a little bit and losing a little memory, but, but basically just wanted to have some assistance in taking care of things. But then over the last 20 years, there have evolved these wonderful memory care units uh, in a number of uh, assisted living facilities, and one of them is Hearthstone. Hearthstone I got introduced to because I live next door in Marlboro, uh, and New Horizons, which is a very large assisted living facility in, in Marlboro, uh, after they were set up and created, um, um, started contracting with Hearthstone to, uh, to run or to have an, a, a memory care unit right there. Uh, these are, memory care units are so-called social model um, communities, so they are not nursing homes. They are not nursing homes, and therefore you can't pay for them using MassHealth. There are some options for paying for them, though. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later, later after Eric is done. But I think many people just dismiss these out of hand. So remember these two things, VA and tax deductibility. We're going to talk about both of those after Eric kind of talks about what a memory care unit is. But I wanted you to get a sense of what they are, how they work, and why, in a certain situation, for Frank and Mary, they may be the right answer. Eric. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, my biggest challenge is to remember how to work the clicker. Ugh, I'll put that down for a second. Um, 
Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. If I ask the question, how many people here know somebody that's caring for somebody with a memory issue, dementia, or Alzheimer's, or is themselves caring for somebody, I might get how many people know somebody that's either caring for somebody that has a memory issue, a loved one, or themselves caring for somebody. I might get most of the people in the room would know somebody that might have Alzheimer's, dementia, or a memory issue, or most people um, you know, may be caring for somebody themselves. So if I ask the question, what do you notice about your friends or your family members that are caring for a loved one with dementia, Alzheimer's, what do you notice happening to that person caring for their loved one? You're pointing thumbs down. Tell me some more. Thumbs down, what do you notice happening? The, the person, the caregiver, is housebound. Yes. Uh, second of all, it's going into territory that they've never been before. Uh -huh. You know, like maybe cooking, cleaning, uh, mm -hmm. taking care of all the pills, uh, mm -hmm. assisting driving, and stuff like that. Uh, the social thing is completely cut out. Then the family thing starts to cut out because of the negativity and the, the issues. And then it becomes great issue. Nothing works. Yeah. Um, that's a lot. So loved ones can get, um, as the process continues, become isolated themselves. They're doing things, as you're saying, whether with medication, that who in their life ever thought they'd have to be doing. So, and, and here's what we know. That's wonderful. So you'd probably want to see, if you were flying on the wall, you'd want to see that your loved one was being cared for, doing things that had meaning to that person, doing things that, um, that your loved one was engaged. So I want to talk, um, when Dr. Zeisel, Hotstone was created by Dr. Zeisel, and there were only six residents of Hearts for Hotstone, six assisted living residents, the goal was to be a thought leader um, in the care for people with dementia, memory issues, Alzheimer's. So we talk about, I'm still here. And that's what our approach is. We talk about that I'm still here. And the thinking behind this is to create an environment. One of the things we know about dementias, memory issues, dementias, and Alzheimer's is that we don't have a drug at this point in time to cure, but we do know the more engagement around meaningful uh, and purposeful activities, conversations, that the process slows. So the thinking behind is Dr. Zeisel, um, in our research, talked about we want to create a environment, and he talks about the we talk about the four A's: the um, anxiety, aggression, apathy, and agitation. And the thinking is, if we create an environment where people are engaged in things that are meaningful and purposeful, that you, those symptoms of memory issues and Alzheimer's will go down drastically. And that's what we do. So research shows the most successful treatment for uh, dementia is a coordinated approach. Hearthstone care model, we both use both pharmacological and non-pharmacological approaches in combination. We do not go at Hearthstones to medication first. Uh, we talk about we first employ the non-pharmacological to reduce symptoms. Uh, second approach, second is then appropriate use of medications. An example, Norman was a gentleman who was living at home for his, with his wife. Norman came to us after years with, the, with his wife, incredibly committed, and it just couldn't work anymore. Norman would get very anxious. Um, at um, definitely afternoon sundowning time. Where's my family? What's going on? Things like that. What we did instead of medication, and we are not, people are, you know, uh, uh, will have medication at Heartstone, but what we did was create a visitor's um, binder. So when people came, we took pictures, and then they wrote stories of the visit. So whether it be his sons, whether it be his wife, whether it be, we had his, yesterday he had family over, brothers, 
um, over and had a wonderful time. Picture, and then we had a great time. This is what we did, this is what we talked about. So for Norman, he was there to open that up and we could read that with him. So that's an example of a non-pharmacological approach. So we talked about the four major category symptoms are apathy, aggression, combativeness, uh, behaviors, agitation, and anxiety. The four A's we call them. So our mission is to present a positive and hopeful message. And what we know, the brain has about what, 100 billion neurons. When the brain of somebody with Alzheimer's dies, there's 60 billion. Our focus is on the 60 billion. One of the things we know about the brain is the part of the brain that's not impacted by the dementia is the emotional part and the procedural learning part. People can learn. People, procedural learning, we know how to tie our shoes over and over and over again. We do it like it is hardwired into our brain. So we talk about at Hearthstone, our, prog our programs are designed uh, to offer our resident ex experiences instead of activities. We want experiences. Anything that we can do, we, want it, we might be able to do it quicker, but we want our residents doing it with us. Whether I'm asking one of the, asking Jim, would you mind helping me? I had to take some boxes out, and in the time we're talking about it, we're talking about how he used to have to, um, you know, clean up. It went from, would you mind helping me unload some of these boxes, to raking the yard in the fall. Do you mind doing this type of stuff? Now, mine's me a raking. Did you have a big yard? So we got off in this conversation as we're doing it together, meaningful and purposeful. So we talk about engagement, 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 engagement. The beauty of what I hear every day, I'm the executive director. I hear every day, would you mind helping me? How, it's great to see you. You know, always about engaging. What's one of the most important things? We wake up in the morning and somebody's looking forward to seeing us, whether we're grumpy or not. That is what we create um, in environment. Uh, we have our activity program features specialized um, from our research. Hearthstone has, we have our own research division where we, not about medical issues, about how people with dementia can learn. I'll share a cu couple of things very briefly with, with you. So we have what we call Hearthside Readers. We have hundreds of topics from the ancient mysteries to movies of the 1950s to the Beatles, the Fabulous Four. So we have them for early stage middle and late stages. So if you can picture me saying to you, would you mind helping me, or would you mind, would you, you know, in, would you mind helping me with our book club? You know, and then we'd come over a small group, we'd, at, we'd let the um, residents would pick out a topic, and we would read. Now if you start to see, the print is bigger, we know that from our research, but here's the beauty. So we talked about the Beatles have had tried many types of music before settling on rock and roll. Do you have a favorite type of music? Rock and roll, country, conversation, conversation, conversation. 